Good evening from Pine Grove Missionary Baptist Church of Linside, West Virginia. May God bless you this evening for tuning in. Appreciate you. Uh, as we begin our service this evening, let's go to our Father in prayer. Father, as we come to your prayer, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our health and well-being. We thank you for blessedness and caring for us to provide for us, meeting our needs according to your riches. And Father, we're so thankful for your mercy and your grace that through that, Father, we can be saved. Father, you loved us enough that you gave your only begotten Son to come put on a robe of flesh, Father, come in person, Father, that he came and, and went to the cross of Calvary to pay the sin debt of all mankind, that includes me. And Father, I'm so grateful that you uh, draw me and you spoke to my heart and helped me come to that point in my life when I realized I was lost and undone and headed to devil's hell. And Father, you convicted me and Father, I'm so grateful for that and for that moment when I realized I needed to be saved and I didn't want to go to hell. And I trusted your word, Father, that you would save me and you have and I'm grateful. And I just pray, Father, that anyone listening to this message this evening, I pray that the Holy Spirit would speak to those hearts. I pray if there's anyone lost that they will come to that point this evening, Father, when they hear the message, Father, that they will open up their heart and allow Christ in and Father, be ready to meet their Lord. Father, just be with us now. May the Holy Spirit guide and direct us unto truth. These things I pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The title of the message this evening is Readiness and Preparedness. We can all relate to readiness and preparedness. We all have had important events to come in our life, such as our own wedding or wedding ceremonies, seeing our child being born, a graduation ceremony, birthday parties. We can think of all kinds of events that come up in our life that are very exciting, and we get ready and we prepare. We put forth a lot of effort, don't we, and a lot of tension. We often rush with excitement. We want to make sure all the I's is dotted and all the T's is crossed, and we make a to-do list and make sure that we don't forget anything, that everything's going to go right without a hitch, you know, and nothing is undone. It's, you know, you don't want to end up, uh, have a big, big event like that, and then you forget some of the major things or the little things that causes a lot of problems, and it, you just feel like it's a big flop. We don't want to do that. Some people plan for hours, days, months, or even years in advance for some events in their life. Some people procrastinate to the last minute. I'm probably one of those. I have to own up to it. Or close to the scheduled time of the event, and then you, some people work better in that last minute, and they, they work and they, they, they make it happen. People have different habits. But with that in mind, let's consider the call and the necessity to be ready, to be prepared to meet thy God. Maybe you're here in this auditorium, you're watching my video and whatever the case might be, and you're thinking, well, I'm ready. I don't need to hear this message. It doesn't apply to me. I'm already prepared. I'm already ready. It's very important to know that you are. That's the most important decision that you make in this life. The most important thing in this whole life is what you do with Jesus Christ. We all have an appointment. We have an event that we will not be late for in this life. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27 reads, And is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. To die means death. We all have an appointment, a specific time for death, to die, and God knows that moment. And God has ordained that from eternity past. He knew when we would be born, and he knows when we'll leave planet earth, rather by death or through the rapture of the church. But he knows we're not going to get out of this world alive unless we go up in the rapture of the church. Amen. 
You know, some people anticipate or under certain circumstances, they know their death is near. Uh, for many people, death comes sudden and unexpected. Many prepare for a lot of things, but mostly people prepare for the wrong things, don't they? We spend a lot of time in our life doing a lot of things and preparing for a lot of things, but a lot of those things are not, don't have eternal value. In Luke chapter 12, verses 15 through 21, I'm going to read a few verses if you want to follow along. Luke chapter 12, verses 15 through 21. It says, And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of the covenants, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided so is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. You know, people prepare and collect material things. They work overtime, do everything they can to buy and to get goods and things and have stuff in this life. They put money ahead. They trade and they trade up and they try to get things and finance and get stuff paid off. Always wanting something else, always wanting more, always want bigger, always want better. We're all guilty of that. Yes. Maybe not in, some, in as big a case as for some as others, but we're all wanting something else. We're never content, we're never satisfied. But these people that do this, just like in this reading, his barns was full, but he, he had increase. So he thought, what am I going to do? I'm going to tear those barns down. I'm going to build bigger barns. And when I fill them all up, I'm going to have it made. I'm going to eat and drink and be merry. And God says, you're a fool because your soul's going to be required of thee. People that have millions and billions of dollars in their account, and they have that death date. What good is all that money? What good is all the wealth and all the toys and all the things that you have when you exhale for the last time and never draw another breath? Go to an auction. Go to an auction and everything that a person or an estate has is there for bid. Goes for yard sale prices sometimes. Sometimes. I've seen people bid up on stuff that was nothing but junk and they paid three times more than what they could have bought a new one for. Mainly they do that because somebody else wants it and they think they're going to be left out. A cousin of mine put everything up for sale and her, her mother had quilts and many wonderful things that to her meant a lot. They were sentimental. And she thought during this auction that it would really be great to share them with people and, and people would want them. And her feelings got hurt. They didn't care about that unless they could get it to sell and make money on or if they could get it for nothing. Listen, earthly things will be left behind. People need to be preparing for their eternity. Most people want to go to heaven, but not today. God speaks of readiness and preparedness. If you'll turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 1, Matthew chapter 1, we're going to be reading a few verses here. I 
I said one, I think it's 25 verse one. I need to look that up. I may have misprinted here. While you're looking right there, let me look in here. Matthew 25, verse 1. Sorry. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Here we can see both readiness and preparedness with the wise virgins. The five foolish was not ready, not prepared. <clears throat> they never took oil for their lamps. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps, and they were ready and prepared. Verse 5 says, While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. At midnight, you see, the bridegroom came. The virgins knew he was coming, but they didn't know exactly the moment that he would come. But now he has come. And verse 8 says, And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your all, for our lamps are gone out. The foolish out of desperation and with their selfish attitude they possessed along with their entitlement attitude like they were entitled to whatever they asked for, they was in need, wasn't they? Their lamps were out. But the wise answered saying, not so, let there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. The wise, because they were wise, was prepared and they prepared for their needs and they acknowledged that there wouldn't be enough for the foolish in them as well, didn't they, on this occasion. They made the suggestion, go purchase your own oil. We've got to have our oil. We're ready for this event. We're waiting for the bridegroom. We're not going to miss it. It's not our fault you didn't bring oil. You should have brought oil. Verse 10 says, And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. There's consequences for not being ready and prepared for most and all things in life. How many times have you looked back and you realized that not putting gas in the vehicle and there's nowhere to get it, and you run out. How many times just little things, if you would just took the time and been prepared and done what you should have done, you wouldn't have been in the mess that you got yourself in. The door of opportunity can be shut forever, and you'll never be allowed to go through. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. In their arrogance, they demanded the Lord, open the door, let us in, let us in, we're here, let us in. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. That's the saddest words that person will ever hear when the Lord says, I don't know you. I don't know you, depart from me. I don't know you. That's the worst words that you can ever hear. How terrible that that would be. Remember, these foolish virgins had every opportunity to be prepared and ready to meet the Lord just or the bridegroom just as the wise did. Verse 13 says, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. The Son of Man, Jesus Christ, will return for his bride, the church. Amen? He's going to return. He's going to return. 
And John chapter 14, verse 1 says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. How can we know the way? And Jesus said, in verse 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh unto the Father but by me. Listen, I'm not the sharpest tack in the bucket. I'll admit it. But God made the gospel simple enough and easy enough for somebody as simple as me that I could understand it and realize Jesus Christ is the only way that I could go to heaven. And I'm thankful that several years ago that God knocked me down and I had to look up. And I realized that I was lost and undone. I knew there was a heaven and I knew there was a hell and I knew that I wasn't going to heaven because I wasn't right with God. I am so thankful, so thankful that I realized that. And I admitted my condition. I didn't know nothing about the Bible much. I didn't know the simple gospel, but I knew I needed to go get it. And I did. I made that decision. And I had to make it for myself. And I didn't have a preacher there. I didn't have a theologian there. I didn't have somebody there to explain everything. But I knew God was dealing with my heart and I knew I was lost and I was undone. And if I died, I was going to hell. And I couldn't wait to make things right, get things right because I didn't want to die and go to hell. Listen, if you want to go to heaven one day, God's heaven, you'll go the way God says that you'll go. Yeah. Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh unto the Father but by him. So many people think they're too good to go to hell. They consider themselves a really good person. They don't drink, they don't smoke, they don't do drugs, they don't cheat, they don't curse, they don't steal. They're honest, they work hard, they help others. God would never send them to hell. That's a true statement. That's a true statement. God does not send anybody to hell. If you didn't know anything, you said the truth right there. Mr. Good Person, Miss Good Person, you're exactly right. God is not going to send you to hell. You will send yourself to hell because you won't accept his son, Jesus Christ. You send yourself there by not accepting the free gift of salvation. God doesn't want anybody to go to hell. That's why he sent his only begotten son to die on the cross of Calvary to pay your sin debt. People send themselves there. Let me give you a warning. Let me give you a warning, listener. Satan does not want you to be saved by the grace of God. And one of his most effective schemes, he played this one to me. And I listened to him when I was much younger and God dealt with my heart. And I listened to Satan and I didn't get saved. I didn't accept Jesus. One of his most effective schemes is to convince you that you have plenty of time. You've got all the time in the world to make that decision. If you're listening and you're not saved, you're probably thinking right now, Satan is probably trying to tell you, don't listen to this guy, he's a nut. Don't worry about it. Go have fun. Don't consider this. You've got plenty of time. You've got years to think about this. Wait till next week. Wait till next year. Wait 10 years from now. If you're a young person, listen to this. 
you're probably thinking, gosh, I'm young, I'm going to wait till I'm up in my years because I've got a lot of oats to sow, I got a lot of, I'm going to have a lot of fun, and this just ain't the cool thing, it ain't the popular thing. Satan is telling you, just, just put it off. Just put it off. Don't worry about it, you've got plenty of time. Listen to me. Listen. You are not guaranteed the next breath. Every breath that we inhale, God gives it to us. Every breath. You think it's your air? Do you, did you create it? Have you ever been at a bedside when someone exhales from the last time? I have. And it was an eye-opening experience. When I heard the breath of a loved one exhale and I heard the sound of the air going through their lips and they never drew another one and I watched them turn gray and cold. It was a reality check. God says, no more. You're done. No more. You're dead. You're done. Your appointment has been reached. Just because you're young doesn't mean you cannot die. It doesn't mean your appointment isn't at hand. If you're not ready to meet thy God, when you exhale that last time, you will wake up in hell. Romans chapter 10 says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. In verse 13, listen to what God says. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's what God said. Have you done that? Have you ever done that? If you have not, on authority of God's word, you're lost. You're lost and you're undone. And if you die, hell awaits you. Am I trying to be mean? Am I trying to be judgmental? No, I'm not. I want you to be saved. I want you to be prepared to meet thy God. If you're listening to my video, what if you're listening and going down the road? What if you're at home? Next time you're in an automobile, how do you know you'll ever come back home? If you're sitting in your living room chair, how do you know you'll ever walk to the kitchen? How do you know you'll ever go to bed? Is there any warranties with your life? You can have a heart attack. You can have an aneurysm. There's multiple and thousands of things that death comes by. Amen? Know that you're ready to meet your God. Please get ready. And I believe the Lord Jesus Christ could come any time. He could come in moments, in seconds. Will you go with him or will you be left behind? In closing, I bet you're saying, I'll, I'll think about it. I bet there's somebody listening right now that's thinking, well, that's pretty good, but I'll, I'll think about it, but I don't think that's for me. The rich man woke up in hell, didn't he? And he's still crying and begging for one drip of water for the moist the tip of his tongue. Are you ready? Don't let the devil scheme you out. You don't have plenty of time. Till next time, goodbye and God bless.